What is an epidural hematoma, also known as an extradural hematoma or hemorrhage? An epidural hematoma is bleeding between the skull and the outermost membrane layer covering the brain, which is called the dura. Hi, I'm attorney Robert Jarchi, and today's topic is epidural hematomas. A network of veins surrounds the skull. And epidural hematomas are usually the result of a blow to the head or a skull fracture. These sorts of head injuries may tear a blood vessel which bleeds into the space between the dura membrane and the skull. Epidural hematomas are often caused when a child or a young adult receives a skull fracture or head injury because the dura membrane that covers the brain is not attached as firmly to the skull as it is in adults. When an epidural hematoma occurs, blood fills the cavity between the dura membrane and the skull itself. An epidural hematoma may expand and then put what's known as intracranial pressure on the brain, which can damage the delicate tissues of the brain itself. Epidural versus subdural hematomas. What is the difference between an epidural hematoma and a subdural hematoma? Epidural hematomas are collections of blood above the dura membrane and adjacent to the skull while subdural hematomas are below the dura membrane covering the brain and are adjacent to the brain itself. Signs and symptoms. Signs and symptoms of epidural hematoma include history of a recent head injury, loss of consciousness, confusion, dizziness, drowsiness, enlarged pupil in one eye, headache, nausea, and weakness. Lucid intervals. A person suffering from an epidural hematoma may have a brief loss of consciousness from the initial trauma and then have a lucid period, which may last several hours in which there's no cognitive impairment. However, meanwhile, blood is accumulating and building and begins to put pressure on the brain, which then may lead to severe cognitive impairment or even a coma. Treatment and surgery. All suspected head injuries should be immediately evaluated by a qualified medical professional. A CT or MRI scan can usually detect epidural hematomas. Epidural hematomas can be treated using a temporary small catheter that is drilled into the skull which actually sucks out the pooling blood inside. Some epidural hematomas may require a craniotomy in which a part of the skull is actually opened up to remove the pooling blood, relieve pressure, and to repair the injured blood vessel itself prognosis. The prognosis following an epidural hematoma depends on the size of the hematoma, the location of the hematoma, and how quickly treatment is obtained. If the hematoma gets large enough to cause sufficient pressure and actually damage the brain, rehabilitation is necessary to improve and restore the person's level of function. An important indicator of the prognosis is going to include the person's Glasgow Coma Scale score which tests eye, motor, and verbal abilities following a brain injury. The higher the Glasgow Coma Score, the better the probable outcome. If you or a loved one has suffered a traumatic brain injury and you have any legal questions about your particular matter, I want to encourage you to pick up the phone and give me a call. You can reach me toll-free at 888-3100-LAW. The word law translates into 529. And you can look me up on the web at greenbrillette.com. I look forward to answering any legal questions you may have. Thank you.